Omniscience is a quality of the Supreme Lord and not the quality of a jiva soul or even of the guru. The Supreme Lord has a total of 64 transcendental qualities. The jiva souls, however, have only 50 of those qualities found in the Supreme Lord and only manifest those qualities in a minute quantity. Among the 50 qualities that the part and parcel jivas have, omniscience is not listed among these 50 qualities. So that list, I believe, is in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu and possibly in other places also. But for sure, I believe Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu or more commonly known in the West as the Nectar of Devotion. Above these 50 qualities, the Supreme Lord has five more qualities, which sometimes partially manifest in personalities like Lord Shiva. These transcendental qualities are changeless, all cognizant, ever fresh, such ananda, possessing an eternal blissful body, and five possessing all mystic perfections. All, cosmic, all co cognizant means to know everything or to be omniscient. One who possesses omniscience is omniscient, all cognizant. And that means personalities like Lord Shiva uh, and, of course, Krishna. Additionally, um, okay, all, cos all, all cos cognizant means to know everything or to be omniscient. According to Srila Rupa Goswami, this is a quality that even the perfected jiva souls do not have. Only Krishna is fully omniscient. Only Krishna or God knows everything. Additionally, it may be mentioned that according to the Webster's Dictionary, the synonyms, synonyms for the word omniscient or omniscience are as follows. God, the Creator, the Almighty, the Supreme Being, our Heavenly Father, the Lord, and get this, and Allah. So maybe we should ask the Webster's Dictionary to add Vishnu and Krishna. So, <laughs> it's kind of funny. Well, not funny. there you have it. Webster's Thesaurus Dictionary gives us the synonyms for omniscient, and it is all about God, the Supreme, Almighty, Our Father. Uh, so I think it's both, it's both, you know, but what happened, it's both common sense as well as a spiritual fact and a siddhanta in Gaudi Vaishnavism. Omniscience is not a quality of the jiva. However, it was pointed out to me this morning with some references and conversation between Jayadvita and Srila Prabhupada and also Sri Maharaj is saying, yes, some omniscience may be manifest in even an ordinary jiva, what to speak of the guru. Some omniscience. But omniscience in the fullest extent of the world, it, it's not a fact. I mean, otherwise, how? you can digest that, you can accept that. Prabhupada is absolute, Prabhupada is omniscient. I'm not speaking to any particular person except that group who was, who was preaching openly and publishing articles 15 years ago. Uh, that Prabhupada is absolute, Prabhupada is omniscient. He's treat Kalagya, he knows past, present, and future, therefore he knew the children were being molested. Really? Do you really think so? Do you really think so? You know, there was one incident where somebody, I don't know who it was, there was some terrorist, I was in Africa at the time, so it must have been 72, 3. And somebody in the New York temple stole $5,000. Well, if I didn't know they stole the money, it was a devotee, the disciple. Well, if I didn't know they stole it until they told him. But then you could have seen, well, maybe he didn't. Maybe he was omniscient, he didn't. Okay, let's say he didn't know. He was omniscient, he knew. 
But when they finally told him, do you know what he responded? I think he responded this in a letter to Gopal Krishna, who was a little less, uh, not a Maharaj at that time. Now Gopal Krishna, Maharaj in Delhi, in India. I believe it was him, I'm not sure. But Prabhupada responded and said, have him arrested. Have that devotee arrested. He stole $5,000 from Krishna, from the temple. Have him arrested. Okay? Now let's add one and one and two. That's one and, let's add one and one and see what we get. Prabhupada is omniscient or regardless, but when he finds out some money was stolen, he says, have him arrested. On the other side, Prabhupada is absolute, he's omniscient. He knows that the children are being molested, but he does nothing. It's their karma. These people said, well, the reason Swamiji didn't do anything because it was the children's karma. So they're putting words into Prabhupada's mouth, but this is what they were saying. So it's their karma. So let me add it together. Children are being molested. He knows it. That's their karma. Money is being stolen. Oh, he gets upset about that and wants them arrested. What, what do you think a third party would say? Any judge, jury, or decent human being in the world would say, oh, we have a person who knows children being molested, but he does nothing about it. But when his money is stolen, he's ready to have uh, even one of his own disciples arrested. What do you think of such a person? Because oh, one and one equals two, two and two equals four. You add these things together and unwittingly un and unknowingly, and then some people even knowingly, are painting a historical picture of Srila Prabhupada that is so out of focus. It's outrageous. It, it, it's got to make your blood boil, people. you got to... I mean, so, uh, Shil Prabhupada, Shil Prabhupada says it right in this conversation with uh, Jaya Dwaita Swami at the end of it. Jaya Dwaita says, Sometimes the Acharya may seem to forget something or not know something. So from our point of view, if someone has forgotten, that is an imperfection. Prabhupada says, Then you do not understand. Acharya is not God. Not omniscient. He is a servant of God. His business is to preach the bhakti cult. That is Acharya. And this is important. So then Jayadweta says, that is the perfection. Prabhupada says, yes, that is the perfection. Then he says, Jayadweta, so we have a misunderstanding about what perfection is. Prabhupada said, yes, perfection is here. How he is preaching the bhakti cult. 